Hi, I'm Harley Quinn Smith, and this is my dad, Kevin Smith, and we're here at Doomie's Home Cooking to share a compassionate meal. When did you even become vegan? It's like a year ago. I've been vegetarian for over a year, and I've been a vegan for eight months. Who suggested it, or where'd you get the idea? Certainly not from me. <laughs> no. <laughs> the reason I went vegetarian is because mom has been a vegetarian for a very long time, and she yeah. never, she never pushed her beliefs upon me and I think that it inspired me to make the decision on my own to become a vegetarian and then I figured about like a half a year since becoming vegetarian that there was no sense in not going all the way. It's about then. the only time a dad wants to hear his daughter say there's no sense in not going all the way <laughs> when it comes to being a vegan. <laughs> That's all we're talking about. Back to you. That's all we're talking about. Why did I have to come eat this compassionate meal with you? <laughs> I've shared a lot of compassionate meals with you where you tell me your problems at school and I'm like, that's okay, honey. That's a pretty compassionate meal. It's different. Now we're being compassionate towards others, not just sharing compassion between each other, but we're showing compassion to animals that didn't have to lose their lives. And now we're, you're able to see that vegan food can be just as good as non-vegan food. I'll be honest with you, coming in here, this isn't even a commercial, I'm getting paid. So you no know strings attached. <laughs> coming in, I was like, oh my God, how am I not gonna vomit at the table because I can't stand vegan food. <laughs> but this is really tasty. It's really good. I'm gonna go for the pork. Let me see for the pork. Are you allowed to say what it's supposed to be? I guess the thought is, hey, I didn't kill something today. I think that the best way to think about vegan food is not thinking of it as an imitation of non-vegan food, but thinking of it as its own type of food because you're not constantly comparing it to something else. You're just appreciating it for what it is and knowing that you didn't have to harm anything in order to eat it. That's the big drive. The you know, naturally, I've always been very compassionate for animals, very empathetic with them too, except the weird split of like, yeah, but I love turkey. But I remember being in Catholic school and being like, how are we, you know, isn't it like Jesus is always carrying around lambs and stuff. Why do we eat them and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the answer was always like, well, animals don't have a soul. And I was just fed that as a kid. So I was like, all right, I'll buy it. But like, you know, most animals, as we all know, you look in their eyes, they got more soul than most human beings. So later in life, I realized, well, that's just kind of a convenient excuse, you know, to tell a kid rather than upset the social order, and the social order, of course, was like, yeah, we eat meat and stuff. Yeah, we like animals, but yeah, we eat their meat as well. Um, so it took years to shake that kind of programming, to be like, it's okay to dig an animal because they're furry and stuff like that, but you can eat them because they have no soul and there's no heaven or hell for, for a cow. But we know that hell for a cow is here on Earth, hooked up to machines and stuff like that. So there's a lot to eat on this planet. Don't have to be, you know, something that used to be alive. Well, it's an sweet. animal. Well, I mean, again, but where's your cutoff? Like uh, Between plants and animals? Yeah, plants are alive, they breathe. But they don't have nervous systems. They cannot feel. I just don't understand, like, <laughs> sooner or later, I know I'm gonna get comfy with this, and then they're gonna be like, then why not do the you plants feel it's either. okay to eat animals? I, because that's the way I was raised. But if you're like, oh, but plants have feelings too. How about the other animals that you eat every day and then take their milk and all of this stuff? Where do you draw the line? I draw the line at, you know, if it's got eyebrows. <laughs> no, I guess that's wrong. I, I can't, I, I don't like plants or anything, so it was easier to, I don't know, again, I was just raised eating There's really meat. There's no, no good excuse? No. <laughs> There's no good excuse in a lot of, once a lot of non-vegans try to hide from the truth as much as they can. Because what do you mean? What's a non-vegan? Is that me? Yeah, <laughs> everybody else. I've been classified? Yeah, you have. <laughs> I've been profiled? They try to hide from the truth a lot because it's hard knowing the stuff that does happen to animals through via the dairy industry and the meat industry. I mean, honestly, like I did not expect to be able to choke down any, but let's see how we're doing with this one. Because this looks, again, look at that tasty right there. Let's see how it goes. It's 100% convincing. Really? Yeah. I think a lot of people mindlessly consume without knowing, without thinking about it, because that's what they know. Yeah. Is to just kind of stay in the dark and continue to have this 
ignorance towards what they're eating and that can sometimes help you feel good about what you're eating but it's not it's not necessarily right so yeah with good places like this if they could like if this was being vegan i can get my head around it <laughs> hi i'm harley kunsmith and i just took my dad out for a compassionate meal now it's your turn to take someone out for a compassionate meal if i can eat a <laughs> compassionate meal you can give it a shot